What happens when a traditional bike brand comes out with electric bikes that are actually affordable? That's what we're gonna find out in this review of the Cannondale Adventure Neo All-Road EQ. But first, let's take a closer look. What you're looking at here is the Cannondale Adventure Neo EQ, and that is because it comes equipped with fenders and the rear rack. It is priced at $18.25. If you don't need those features, the bike goes all the way down to $16.75. And on the higher end, if you want a bigger battery and a larger motor, you can go for the S, which of course stands for speed. This bike comes in a high step with two different sizes, medium and large. I am a six foot tall rider. It also comes in a step through with sizes small and medium. As the name All Road implies, this bike is meant to be ridden on the pavement as well as taken to the trails. And that's of course, thanks to these 27.5 by 2.6 inch wide Kenda Booster tires. We're gonna be testing them out in our upcoming first person riding footage. And in the third person riding footage, I'll talk more about why I think it's such a big deal that Cannondale has released affordable electric bikes. Stopping power is provided by these Tektro hydraulic disc brakes paired with 180 millimeter Tektro rotors. You also get a bright integrated front light, nice cable wrapping, mounting points for a front rack, and the wheel is quick release for easy removal. In the cockpit, matching Tektro hydraulic levers, no motor cutoffs, basic non-locking rubber grips, left-hand thumb throttle. It's a micro shift drivetrain, seven speeds, trigger shifter, the handlebars are wider than we find on most electric bikes, something that mountain bikers like myself will appreciate. The small left-hand display opens up the cockpit for plenty of accessories like our Elastocase cell phone mount. This is the quick release version. Jumping to the display, it is a Bifang display, power button at the top. It is a monochrome display, battery indicated on the left, miles per hour front and center, pedal assist in the bottom left, zero all the way up to five, trip indicated on the bottom, Pressing the power button will change the information. Odometer, max speed, average speed, range. That changes depending on the pedal assist level you're in. Calories, power, going to the motor, time, and back to trip. The battery is semi-integrated into the frame. Turn the key to the left to unlock, pull it out. This is a 36 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery, 417 watt hours. It has a button to give you an idea of current battery capacity. This is how it looks with the battery you've removed. The battery can be charged both on and off the bike. Charger port right here. To put the battery back, simply insert the bottom end first and snap it into place. Here's where you can charge the battery while it's in the bike. Bottle cage bosses on the seat tube with our adjustable water bottle holder. This is the Sidewinder. Comes with plastic pedals and a rear mounted kickstand. The rear rack has a 25 kilogram capacity, so you can store a rear bag like the Cool Pack, available at shop.ebikeescape.com. Allows you to hold some drinks on your ride. Basic Cannondale seat. It has an integrated rear light. It is not brake actuated, and it actually just stays on. It does not blink. This is a Bifang rear hub motor, 250 watts. Micro shift, seven speed drivetrain. 14 to 34 teeth in the rear, and a 38 tooth front chain ring. It has a chain stay protector to keep your frame looking nice. Cable management beneath that. And according to this sticker, the bike is made in Cambodia. But more importantly, how does the bike perform? Let's get into some first person riding footage. Let's take this thing for a ride. I would highly recommend the step through, just a lot easier to hop on. I have the speedometer app by Cool Nix on my phone. We'll be comparing that to the Bafang display. Battery is fully charged. A few more things to talk about. Number one, the throttle does not work from a stop. So we'll need to get going in order for the throttle to engage. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. This is a cadence sensor electric bike, which means as long as my legs are moving, my legs are spinning, it's going to provide the power depending on the pedal assist level. And they call this Cannondale Assist Tune. I believe it is current based, which means it's giving you a certain amount of current in each pedal assist as opposed to speed based where the motor is just cutting off at a certain speed. I'll be sure to talk more about that as we go through the various gears. And I am also going to turn it on 
to power so we can see how much wattage we're getting out of this 250 watt motor. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take one pedal stroke, wait till I get up to speed just a little bit, one, one miles an hour. And using that throttle, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, creeping up 16. Remember, this is a class two electric bike, top speed of 20 miles per hour while pedaling or while using the throttle, you have to go for the S if you want the 28 mile per hour top speed. And the Bafang display is reading 19.3, 19.5, 19 and there's 19 on the display on my phone for GPS and it looks like that's going to be the top speed. And we are currently pulling 299 watts, 300 watts. And now the Bafang display is, was reading, just for a second, close to 20 miles per hour. And while you can't use the throttle from a stop, it doesn't matter what pedal assist level you're in, you still get, can get up to 20, even if you're in pedal assist level one. All right, I am going to shift all the way down into first gear and I'm going to stop and we will go in pedal assist level one and I'll walk through how this bike feels. Now, given it is a 250 watt bike, should just get a little bit of assistance, but should be pretty easily capable of those class two speeds. All right, nice and gentle on the motor, not surprising. This bike is definitely not going to overpower you, but I do need to shift up. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. Maybe even six gear. Cruising at 15 miles an hour, 16 miles an hour. And that leads me to believe that it is likely current-based as opposed to speed-based. Because if it was speed-based, it'd probably be cutting off at you know 12 miles an hour. So 15, 16 is a very easy speed to cruise on. I'm not putting in too much effort. There's 17, let's go ahead and go into Pelsis level two. And I will need to shift up into seventh gear. So the highest gear on this bike. And there's 19 miles an hour. And there's 20 on my phone GPS display. So not bad considering it's a 250 watt motor, even in the second level of pedal assist, you still have plenty of power to get up to speeds, though perhaps you could do it faster in a higher pedal assist level. Let's go ahead and go into three, nine, 12 miles an hour, 14. And we're pulling 330 watts. It's kind of the highest I'm seeing there. Going to pedal assist level four. Though the bike is going to kick off at 20 miles per hour. All right, we're gonna round this corner here. And then I'm gonna go in pedal assist level five and see if I can see what the peak power of this motor is. All right, here we go, pedal assist level five. Let's see how fast we can get up to speed and pulling a lot more power. I did see over 500 watts for a second on the peak power. And there's 20 miles per hour. And we got some wet roads, but I'm gonna brake test quick at this tree. Not so bad on the brake test. And just riding this bike around the first time you get on this bike, if you're not used to wider handlebars like a mountain bike, that is one thing I will say that is different about this e-bike compared to most of the e-bikes that I feature on the channel. But as a mountain biker, I just feel like this bike is capable of so much more. You just get on and I feel like I'm in mountain bike mode. All right, so that's how this bike performs on flat ground, but let's see how it does up our large hill climb test.
Here's our hill climb test. This is the hill that I test out all the electric bikes that I review on the channel so you can compare and contrast. GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it is, so put up a picture as well as the specs of the hill and our first test will be throttle only. And I wanted to at least try to get up to speed for this steep hill because a 250 watt motor might struggle, we'll see. And we'll also see what the peak power is with the motor working as hard as it can. It looks like 560 watts hill is really starting right now. And yeah, the wattage on the display just pegged at 562 watts, 12, 11 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, nine. And keep in mind, I am a lighter weight rider at around 145 pounds, eight miles an hour. Usually the 750 watt motors, they're seven. That peak, you know, 1100, 1200 watts, the minimum speed is 15, 16, depending on how po powerful the bike is. Even in the low teens is very impressive in my opinion on some of those bigger motors. But if you're considering this electric bike, you're probably a little less concerned about motor power, given that it is 250 watts, you just want an extra boost. And it is a bike shop brand. So we did make it to the top of the hill. Minimum speed was seven miles an hour. Now this is an electric bike after all, and given it has a smaller motor, this more than most electric bikes is meant to be pedaled. So I'm gonna go back down the hill and I'll talk through going up the hill while pedaling. All right, here we go. I'm going to go down into pedal assist level one and I'm going to shift down the micro shift shifter all the way to first gear. I'm kind of curious if you can conserve battery or if I need to go in pedal assist level five in order to get me up the hill without too much effort, we'll see. One thing I did want to talk about is the cadence sensor feels very responsive. As soon as I start pedaling, I feel power from the motor. All right, we are pulling 180 watts, first gear and I wouldn't say I'm not working, but I wouldn't be winded at the top of the hill. So you can conserve some battery, get a little bit of a workout. It's certainly possible in first gear. And we're cruising at six miles an hour. Could carry on a conversation. All right, pedal assist level two though. Now we're up at 257 watts. You know, I know I got more power from the motor didn't feel a significant amount as far as making it easier. So let's go up into pedal assist level three. There's 325 watts. That's what's pegging at. And that is definitely easier. If you can see my legs are spinning much more easily. I could maybe even shift up to second gear if I wanted a slower cadence, but I'll leave it in one. All right, pedal assist level four, getting 410 watts. And this is definitely where I'd shift up into second gear, going eight, nine miles an hour. And let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five, getting that over 500 watts. And I'd probably stay in second gear here, cruising up at 11 miles an hour. So not surprisingly, it's gonna help a lot if you provide some of your own power So even with a smaller motor, if you plan on pedaling, the bike is capable. All right, this bike does have adventure and all road in its name. And this is really the perfect opportunity to showcase how you might use this electric bike. There's a train up here, but I think I know a shortcut. Take a left here. And this is where it gets a little bit bumpy.
All right, here we go. I got to the end of the train, but usually it isn't quite this far, so we are gonna have to wait. But it's backing up already, which is good news. All right, here we go, train's gone. And we're gonna jump left here. And this is where my shortcut really shines. We got some crushed gravel and that's what I really envision this bike is intended for. Well, it certainly feels with the wider handlebars that you could take a mountain biking. You don't have front suspension, but a path like this is really perfect. If you have any crushed gravel paths with some loose rock, they have these knobbier tires. And the bike is having no problem tackling this terrain. Cruising at 20 miles per hour. Maybe a slightly faster cadence than I'd personally prefer. Even some more rocky terrain. All right, there we go. We beat the train. All right, with that, Let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Cannondale Adventure Neo All Road EQ. A man and a woman walk into a bike shop and the woman asks, do they have e-bikes with built-in GPS? The man replies, I don't know, but at these prices, they better come with a personal tour guide. Now in all seriousness, this has been more or less the reality. Buy a direct-to-consumer e-bike and roll the dice with support. Sometimes it's US-based, other times it's overseas support. But even some of the better companies known for their customer support still ask you to take pictures, video, or even check and test various parts of a bike when there are issues. The alternative is to buy from a bike shop and spend several thousand dollars more on the low end. Now we have a third option. Still buy an e-bike from a bike shop, spend a reasonable amount, and have bike shop support for anything you need. And this last one is the deciding factor for some. Even more, this e-bike is from a brand that many who frequent bike shops are aware of, Cannondale. And it shouldn't be surprising that yes, you can still buy more premium e-bikes from Cannondale, but you don't have to, and that's the point here. Options from Cannondale span multiple lines of bikes with a decent amount of options sub $2,000, but the Adventure Neo all roads are going to be the most economical. You can check local in-stock e-bikes online or simply purchase online and pick up at your local shop with free assembly. If you take a direct-to-consumer e-bike to your local shop, you're going to pay around $150 to $200 for professional assembly to get the bike ready to ride. And that's if they'll do it at all. So that's an important consideration as well. The three trim levels on the Adventure Neo All Roads allow you to pick the e-bike that best suits your needs. The No Frills Adventure Neo All Road is fantastically priced at $16.75. Those planning to ride in all weather or those who need cargo space will appreciate the fenders and rear rack of the EQ I'm riding here at $18.25. And for those who watch this review but feel they'll be better served by a more powerful motor, have the option for the speed spec at $2,025, just $200 more. Not only is the motor 750 watts, you also get a 48 volt battery with 720 watt hours of capacity. Not bad. But back to the EQ. The 250 watt name brand Bafang motor is adequate on flat ground for speeds up to 20 miles per hour without much effort. And the motor eases on nicely both while pedaling and throttling, which is great for those new to e-bikes. The battery, 36 volt, 11.6 amp hours is below average if we're comparing it to direct to consumer brands though it should take most riders pretty easily 20 miles on throttle alone. The Bifang display is simple and the micro shift components on some of these more entry level bikes are perfectly fine for recreational riding. It was nice to see the inclusion of Tektro hydraulic disc brakes on these low price point models and something that we don't often see, two size offerings, whether you go with the step through or the high step. And yes, included front and rear lights. This e-bike is differentiated in the market as a do everything kind of bike. Geometry wise and components wise, you can tell they really thought about making it off-road capable, though yes, a front suspension fork would have been a deal sweetener. Though I'm guessing they would have wanted to go with a name brand suspension fork, with Cannondale having higher standards for components 
and that would have added significant cost. And by the way, this nice high-vis or electric yellow helmet is the Side Street, available from Cannondale for $115. It's got MIPS and it's a bit more stylish than your typical bike helmet. Anyway, I really want to hear what you think of the Adventure Neo All-Road Collection in the comment section below. Considering the customer experience, price, components, I think Cannondale is onto something here and yeah, they also launched the Cargo Wagon Neo. So if you like this video, first off, like the video and we'll try to review more from the Cannondale lineup. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.